own. We are continuing now with Psalm 106. This is a lengthy psalm, and so I'm going to read excerpts from it and summarize the rest. It starts as follows. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love is eternal. Who can tell the mighty acts of the Lord? Proclaim all his praise. Happy are those who act justly, who do right at all times. Be mindful of me, O Lord, when you favor your people. Take note of me when you deliver them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones. Share the joy of your nation, glory in your very own people. We have sinned like our forefathers. We have gone astray, done evil. Our forefathers in Egypt did not perceive your wonders. They did not remember your abundant love but rebelled at the sea, at the Sea of Reeds. Yet he saved them as befits his name to make known his might. He sent his blast against the Sea of Reeds. It became dry. He led them through the deep as though, as through a wilderness. He delivered them from the foe and redeemed them from their enemy. Water covered their adversaries. Not one of them was left. Then they believed his promise and sang his praises, but they soon forgot his deeds they would not wait to learn his plan. And then that's up to verse 13. Then continuing with verse 14 through verse 32, the psalmist continues with a list and a litany of insults directed by the people against God. All the examples, including the the golden calf, the waters at Meribah, uh, their faithlessness uh, with the Midianites at Baal Peor, uh, turning their backs on the covenant, forgetting all of God's uh, graceful and miraculous deeds, and instead choosing to follow the path of disbelief and of cynicism, and they turned away from the covenant and ignored the Torah and provoked the wrath of God. And then in verse 34, they did not destroy the nations as the Lord had commanded them, but mingled with the nations and learned their ways. They worshiped their idols, which became a snare for them. Their own sons and daughters they sacrificed to demons. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. So the land was polluted with blood guilt. Thus they became defiled by their acts, debauched by their deeds. When the Israelites entered the promised land, instead of completely obliterating the Canaanite nations, instead they allowed some of those nations to exist and persist, and thus they became infected by the idolatrous practices of those Canaanite nations and continued to reject the covenant and the Torah. And so God's reaction, he was angry with his people. He handed them over to the nations. Their enemies oppressed them. God continued to save them time and time again, but they were deliberately rebellious and so they were brought low by their iniquity. Verse 44, when he saw that they were in distress, when he hear, heard their cry, he was mindful of his covenant, and in his great faithfulness relented. He made all their captors kindly disposed towards them. Deliver us, O Lord our God, Hoshienu Adonai Eloheinu, Bekabtsenu Minagoyim, and gather us from among the nations, Lodot L'shem Kochecha, to acclaim your holy name, to glory in your praise. Baruch Adonai Elohei Yisrael. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel. Min ha'olam v'yad ha'olam. From eternity to eternity. V'amar kol ha'am. Amen. Hallelujah. Let all the people say amen. Hallelujah. A number of verses in this psalm are incorporated uh, into the liturgy. Some on uh, the everyday prayers and one verse in particular is recited on Rosh Hashanah. Uh, so the theme here, of course, is the theme of the people's rejection of God. And in contrast, God will never utterly reject God's people. God might from time to time have to punish them. 
They might have to suffer the consequences of their, of their deeds, but in the end, God will never, ever recant on the covenant. God will always, always remember the covenant with the people and in the end will deliver the people from extinction. So that is one of the main themes of this psalm, and it has to do, of course, a lot in, in our own lives with the relationships between parents and children. Children can be rebellious. Children can reject the teachings that we try to impart to them. And we might sometimes, especially with younger children, have to take uh, direct action so that they can see the consequences of of what they do in order to to be corrective and in order to help them develop better character. But in the end, we will never, as parents, completely abandon them. Uh, the covenant that we have with our children will remain in effect. We will try our very best, our very best, no matter what our children do, never to let go of them altogether. Now, I'd like to uh, focus on one verse also, even though many of these verses are, are kind of depressing and downers in terms of the people's faithlessness, uh, but in contrast with that, God's love of God's people and qualities as a deliverer is, of course, an upbeat theme. And there's one verse in here that I'd like to single out. Mi yimaleo gvurot Adonai, yashmiyah kolti lato, who can tell the mighty acts of the Lord, proclaim all his praises. That first part of verse 2, mi yimaleo gvurot Adonai, was slightly altered in a very popular Hanukkah song, which is known as mi yimaleo gvurot Yisrael. Instead of who can tell the mighty acts of the Lord. Instead, in that song, Mi Yimaleo, who can tell the mighty acts of Israel, of the people Israel. And so, uh, in light of the heroic deeds of the Maccabees and the celebratory uh, aspects of, of Hanukkah, and in light of the emphasis in this song that I'm going to sing for you in a moment, an emphasis on the people's heroism, on the loyalty of the Maccabees, in contrast with the disloyalty of the Israelites many centuries earlier. So let's focus on the loyalty. Let's focus on the love and the devotion, the mutual devotion between God and Israel. And so in that light, I'm going to sing you the Hanukkah song, Mi Yimaleo. Mi yimaleo gurok Yisrael otam Mi yimne Eim bechotor yakum agibor goel ha Mi yimaleo gurok Yisrael otam Mi yimne Eim bechotor yakum agibor goel ha ha Shma Bayamim haim bazman Kabi Moshia Ufode Uviame nu kolam Yisrael Yitachen Yakum le Higael Mi Yemalev Gurok Yisrael Otami Yemne Heim Bechotor Yakum Magibor Goel Mi Yemalev Gurok Yisrael Otami and here's the translation. Who can retell the things that befell us or befell Israel? Who can count them? In every age, a hero or sage come came to our aid. Hark! In days of yore, in Israel's ancient land, brave Maccabeus led the faithful band. But now all Israel must as one arise, redeem itself through deeds and sacrifice. And that's 
the song in Hebrew and in English. And we as Israel, as members of the Jewish community, and members of all the human community, no matter what religion, no matter what faith, no matter what culture, all of us are given the opportunity to redeem ourselves and deliver ourselves through deeds and sacrifice and service and heroic acts, brave acts that allow us to focus and connect to our higher selves, to our inner core of our spiritual existence. And when we are able to do that, we rise above our lowly aspects of who we are. We rise above our selfishness and our faithlessness and move into heroic grace. Thank you.